Hey TCS viewers, it's Chris here from the Camera Store with a very special episode. As you can see behind me, this is not Calgary. We're on the Triborough Bridge. We are in New York City on our way to Manhattan. We're here for special invites. Sony has brought us in to take a look at the brand new Sony A7S Mark II. Now this camera might not be full production, I don't know, but we're gonna try it out. We're gonna shoot it here for the next couple days in a city which I haven't been to in 30 years. I grew up here, I can't wait to see how it's changed, get some great videos and photos. Now keep in mind, Jordan is shooting some of this on the A7S and hopefully some of it on the A7S Mark II. So this part's gonna be a little bit bumpy, but it's gonna be a great adventure, come with us. All right, guys, we got in our hands here the Sony A7S Mark II, and it is a full production copy. So we're gonna hit the streets of New York here. We're gonna shoot some good tests with this camera. We had a lot of fun at the launch party, though, where we got these cameras. We got to meet Tony and Chelsea Northrup. That was very cool. We got to meet Kevin from Luminous Landscapes, and we got to meet Hugh from Planet 5D, and so many more. So we had a really good time, but I'm eager to get this out on the streets and shoot in this low light because that's what this camera is good for. Now, of course, it is a video centric camera, absolutely. And so you will see Jordan. He's going to do a big bulk of this video review here tonight. But let's get to the streets, take some low light photos and see what this camera can really do. check out this awesome church and you know this brings me to the Sony a7s's low light performance and now with the mark II, it has the same sensor but they have done some tweaking we're getting similar low light performance but it's a little bit better check out this shot 25,600 all right, now I know the video oriented people out there are very excited about the inbuilt stabilization, but actually I gotta say walking around here at night taking stills, it's also fantastic for that. Couple that with the already fantastic full frame sensor at 12 megapixels, throw in the inbuilt body stabilization and this new dampened shutter and this thing is a low light beast. You can see a shot I took here, 13th of a second, no problems. It really inspires confidence shooting the situations. You can see the motion blur of the girl walking, but everything else is nice and sharp. This camera is made for these conditions. All right, so to really showcase how good this camera is in low light, take a look at this first photo. This is 8,000 ISO, 5.6. And this is, I shot how my eye sees it. It's almost black. We just get a little bit of the lights in the windows. Now check out the shot at 64,000 ISO. This is what the camera is able to deliver and still give me a shutter speed that I can handhold well. The results are still very, very decent. I even pushed it here to 256,000 ISO. I mean, this is ridiculous, but you can see that this camera is able to handle even the most minuscule amount of light. Now I'm happy to shoot around the city lights here. I mean, I know a lot of people say New York is really bright, city that never sleeps, a lot of lights around, but there's plenty of areas that are almost pitch black and yet this camera, if you want to get exposure in those areas, it can do it. All right, now I know we've got some Halloween monster lighting on me, fitting for the time of year, but what I really want to show you is just taking a photo here. I got this bright light in the shot, and of course, what I want to do is get these shadows to show up. So if you take a look at this photo here, I'm basically just overexposing the shot, correcting against the meter, bringing that light back up again. The A7S Mark II has no problem doing that. But what I want to get at is this dial on the back is nice and easy. In fact, again, all the dials are in a really good place. I haven't shot a lot of stills on the A7S, 
7 bodies, the Mark II bodies now, this, this body design. But uh, I'm growing to it. I'm, I'm warming up to it. Again, I still find these plastic dials to be problematic, but they work. They just feel a little bit cheap. But overall, this camera handles pretty well. Of course, menus. Let's not even get into it. Of course, one of the things that I was expecting to get here and I'm happy to receive is the brand new viewfinder that the A7R Mark II had. We noted in our review of that camera that it was noticeably better and again, great to have in these conditions. Uh, just beautiful, sharp, easy to see through. I'm actually finding it much easier to manual focus because I am using Loxia and Leica glass tonight. So, you know, exclusive manual focus. I'm finding it quite a bit easier to use that with this new viewfinder rather than the back screen. Of course, I do have handy punch and controls. I can customize those. So that does make life easier. Now, another thing that I've noticed that's a nice improvement on the A7S Mark II is just the JPEG processing overall. You get a much better idea, even if you're shooting raw, just of what you're gonna end up with or what the potential is. Now, I know you're like, Chris, shut up. We just wanna hear about the video. And I understand that this camera is really a video-centric camera, but just keep in mind this. I mean, let me try to get this point across. This camera is always great in low light. I mean, it was amazing at that. We know that. And 12 megapixels, although maybe you know pushing it more to a niche product, is still a very, very good amount for most people to shoot with. You got to appreciate that adding the inbuilt body stabilizer and the new shutter, this whole new shutter mechanism, the new position of the shutter on the Mark II bodies, this all culminates to make this camera just beautiful to use for this kind of photography. I'm glad they're in New York to shoot this kind of stuff because this is the perfect environment, the perfect situation for this camera for stills. But yes, okay, let's give in. Let's pass you over to Jordan. He's got a lot to talk about. The video capabilities of this camera are equally impressive. All right, guys, let's talk about video. That's the really exciting thing on this A7S. And Chris is filming me now, so this is gonna be an interesting test for him. Can he shoot me talking and not make it look like an intro for Saturday Night Live? The test begins now. So the A7S was actually a really revolutionary camera. It was used all over the world in event work, uh, anything where you needed extreme low light, and it had Sony's S-Log. It was one of the first small cameras to offer a log profile. So where do they go from that? Basically, they've added the stuff that was honestly kind of missing from the first one. We've now got the S-Log3 profile, and most importantly, this thing finally shoots 4K internally right to a memory card at 100 megabits per second. So the A7S II isn't the first Sony A7 camera that's recording 4K internally, but the A7R II, when you shot in the full frame mode, it was pretty awful quality. You really wanted to shoot in the Super 35 mode to get the most out of it. This sensor and this processing is designed to give you the best quality in full frame mode. So if you love that full frame aesthetic, very shallow depth of field, especially when you're using your wide angle lenses, then this is the body for you. Looking at the internal 100 megabit per second compression, it's actually really good. You're not gonna notice any real issues with you know, motion compression, things like that. Still, if you're gonna really push a shot in terms of especially white balance, it might be worth recording it externally. But using the new S-Log3, it's pretty amazing how much you can move the exposure up and down. You know, here's a slightly overexposed shot. Here's one where we just crush everything right down. And that's all recorded internally. You know, it does give you a lot of flexibility in post. Okay, so what the A7S series of cameras have always been known for is the low light performance. That's why so many people looked at it. And it is slightly tweaked in this. I would say probably about a half stop better is kind of what I'm thinking. It is slightly improved, but the big advantage is you've got that 4K option. And now you've got to remember, when you're shooting higher resolution, that noise is going to be more visible. But what's nice is if you shoot 4K, you've got the option of applying noise reduction, smoothing that out, or if it's a shot where the noise is handled really well, you've got the option to keep that in there. I mean, we're shooting at God knows what. It'll say at the bottom of the screen what our ISO is right now, and it looks beautiful. It's an option, and this is something that wouldn't have been available a few years ago, and it's even better in the A7S Mark II. So Sony continues its legacy of making the A7 line the most confusing ones in still camera history because the A7R2, just a few weeks ago I said, always shoot in the Super 35 mode. That's where you're gonna get nice S-Log recording and beautiful low light performance. But now with the A7S2, don't shoot in the Super 35 mode. I mean, first of all, it's not even available if you're rolling 4K. If you switch it over to 1080, you're gonna find the exact opposite. You get, in the full frame mode, much better shadow detail and log recording much better high ISO performance. So I do consider this strictly a full frame camera. That's how you're gonna to wanna to use it. 
The biggest feature for a lot of people on the A7S II is going to be the new stabilizer. That's something that was sorely lacking from the original, and of course the A7 II came out immediately after just to taunt them. And it works incredibly well. I tried to just shoot basically an entire set of a band performing live, just handheld. Um, and you can see here, you know, it's not a steady cam. When you're moving shot to shot, it can get a little bouncy. But when you're trying to keep the camera steady and you're staying stationary, it is rock solid and works beautifully in pans, things like that too. So you have to understand the limitations of the stabilization system, but it is a huge improvement over, you know, hand holding it. So uh, I'm gonna talk about the LUT built into this camera. It's actually my favorite feature on the new A7S II. Basically, when we're shooting a log file, we get additional dynamic range, we get a lot more flexibility in post, but it does mean that we're looking at an ugly, unsharpened image with no contrast, no saturation. It's very difficult to gauge exposure, white balance, and check focus. So with this, we can record that beautiful new S-Log3 information, but we can also look at a LUT, so we get a nice contrasty image while we're shooting. Makes it so much easier to judge that, but then going to the memory card is that beautiful, flexible, gradable image. Makes shooting so much easier, and it's great that I don't have to strap a monitor to the top of this camera anymore. The low light features are what everybody wants to know about the A7S II, but there's a lot more to it. But uh, frankly, I'm getting tired, so uh, I'm gonna head in. We're gonna take a look at some of those other features tomorrow, and more importantly, I'm gonna get a chance to look at the images. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so it's day two in New York now, and we're shooting in uh, Times Square. I'm sure the audio is bleeding all over the place, like that jackhammer there. But, you know, we're shooting in Times Square. What do you want, really? Um, so Sony took back their A7S II. Uh, we're shooting back on the A7S original now. But I did get a chance to shoot some slow-mo and take a look at the files. Uh, it's certainly better than the original A7S. This is 120 frame per second footage played back in 24. Uh, quite a bit sharper, a little less more aliasing than the original, but there's still a heavy crop with it. Uh, we shot this on a 35mm lens, and it looks more like about a 60mm to me. So it is a dramatic crop that's going to make it tough to shoot wide-angle stuff, but it is improved, and that's nice to see. I really wanted to take a look at the new S-Log3 profile, so I shot this high contrast scene and compared it to S-Log2 as well, just for reference, and brought the waveforms up, and you can see here, we've got a whole lot more highlight latitude with the S-Log3, and even a little bit more in the shadows as well. The whole idea of shooting log is to get access to as much of the sensor information as possible, and the S-Log3 certainly does a better job of that. Okay, we've moved to Central Park, so that's it. We've hit all the landmarks now. There's nowhere else to go, which is good because I'm getting to the end of this. And, you know, it sounds like the A7S II is pretty much the perfect travel video camera, but it still does definitely have some serious issues. And the trouble is, so many of them are carried over from the old bodies, stuff we've been complaining about for the longest time. Uh, let's start with the menu system. Again, it just keeps getting bigger, more difficult to work through. I love that they've added the LUTs, but why do I have to go into the tools setting for that? Shouldn't that be in the display? Or can I, I just, I've stopped trying to figure out why they're doing that in the first place. It makes no sense. Uh, and I still can't reprogram my record button to my shutter when I'm in movie mode. Would make so much sense. I can do it on the GH4 and it works incredibly well. I'd love to see that on the A7S. Of course, everybody talks about the battery life on all the A7 series, and it's still not great. It's actually, I'd say, quite a bit better than the original A7S. With that, I'd get maybe 40 minutes. Uh, this I found I got about an hour 15, and that was shooting 4K with the stabilizer turned on. So battery life's improving, but it, this is a video-centric camera. I really wish they'd given me just a slightly larger grip that gave me a full-size HDMI input and a bigger battery. That would make all the difference. My only other real issue with the A7 lineup, and this goes across the entire series, are the FE lenses. I'd like to see some with real manual focus rings on them. I hate using focus by wire, and I know they can do it. They've got their 28-135. It's huge, but it has a real focus ring. I'd like to see just a set of primes or a zoom where I can just push-pull, switch between autofocus and a proper manual focus ring. As is all day, I've been using adapted glass. We've got a Leica lens on there right now, or we've been using some of the Zeiss Loxias. So that's one change I'd definitely like to see. I'm going to swing it over to Chris now. He'll kind of give us a wrap-up of the entire camera, and we'll see you guys soon. All right, so that pretty much wraps things up for us here in New York. You know, we had a lot of fun with the A7S Mark II, 
And, uh, you know, as far as downsides go, I just want to make a point about that because I know there's a lot of people saying, oh, you guys are broken records, always talking about battery life, always talking about poor menus. But really, you know, we had this launch party. We got to meet a lot of other big names in the industry. And the reason why we keep talking about this is really a testament to how great the A7 cameras are. There's really nothing else to complain about. And Sony's getting better and better. Now, as far as the A7S Mark II goes, the only other issue that I have from a stills point of view the autofocusing definitely faster than the original A7S, but Sony chose not to put their 399 point system into it like we have in the A7R. It's not a bad deal. I mean, you're still getting really fast focusing during video. I still found it was quick, you know, getting still shots, but I think it's just a cost cutting feature and Sony is really trying to make sure that the R and the S have differentiation. And on that note, we talk about these two models, these sisters, A7S, A7R Mark II and how they differentiate. I don't think Sony expects you to buy both. I know they're expensive cameras, we have to appreciate that. And I don't think the A7S is a good all round choice. This is really still a niche product, great for full frame video, you know, nice slow-mo capabilities and a low light beast. It was perfect last night, you know, downtown New York at nighttime. But I still think the A7R Mark II is a better all round choice and that camera is still fantastic in low light too. I wanna to mention another thing here, of course, we were in New York, it's a special event because we got to see Sony's new launches. The uh, RX1 R Mark II, very exciting. I know not a surprise for you guys by the time you're watching this now, but we really like it. We can't wait to review it. We're especially excited. The optical low pass, the variable capability looks pretty cool. I really like the new viewfinder. The camera's getting smaller. The sensor, of course, from the A7R Mark II is gonna be fantastic. So that's coming out soon. We're excited. Keep watching so you can see it. Don't forget to check out our Instagram, Twitter, talk to us, subscribe. From Jordan and I here in New York, we had a hell of a time. It was fantastic. Next time we see you, it'll be Calgary. See you guys soon.